Over the decades, the Philippines has continuously recognized the need to bolster its naval strength. It has acquired warships, frigates, anti-ship missiles, and even a possible submarine acquisition costing hundreds of millions of dollars. These became essential because of the changing geopolitical scenarios, regional threats, and the country's inherent vulnerability to external pressures. In recent years, especially since the adoption of Armed Forces of the Philippines Modernization Act or Republic Act 7898, saw an ever-increasing push from incumbent presidents to adopt and acquire newer, better, and more grandiose military equipment. But the most important facet of today's video will not discuss the entire AFP Modernization Act, but rather the Philippine warship programs. The Philippines Navy program has been actively acquiring warships left and right, and these warships aren't just any small time for reputation purposes only. No, they are big, costing billions of pesos to acquire. They are, arguably, enough to slowly show that the Philippines is serious about defending its territory, especially against China. One should also look at it from an economic and industrial point of view. These warships do not just represent the Philippines keen on defending its territory, they represent that the Philippines can and will acquire arms if it needs to, and it also shows that the Philippines is no longer an archipelago country off the coast of Southeast Asia. They are becoming a vital part of the entire Asian region. Now, enough of those details. Let us talk about the most important factor of today's video. Just how many warships does the Philippines really possess? We will discuss these and more. To begin, let us discuss some of the current warships in possession of the Philippine Navy. Probably the most famous warship currently being used is the famous Jose Rizal class frigate. The Jose Rizal frigate was ordered way back in 2016, built by Hyundai Heavy Industries in Ulsan, South Korea, and based on South Korea's Incheon class, these warships have been outfitted to accompany a wide array of weapons. These range from sonar, anti-ship missiles, and multi-purpose naval guns. The Jose Rizal frigate is also equipped with surface-to-air missiles. Each frigate is accompanied by 110 personnel and a top speed of 25 knots. The BRP Jose Rizal was launched in May 2019 and was commissioned in July 2020 whereas its sister BRP Antonio Luna was commissioned at a later date in March 2021. According to various reports, the Philippine government had signed a deal with the Korean government for two multi-role frigates worth 16 billion pesos, the Navy's biggest implemented project during that time. Secondly, the Philippine Navy also has the Conrado Yap class corvette, or also known as the BRP Conrado Yap, which back in 2019 was noted as the, quote, most heavily armed and powerful surface combatant navy unit. The BRP Conrado Yap was touted with anti-submarine capabilities, armed with automatic guns, secondary cannons, and anti-aircraft anti-ship missiles. Like the Jose Rizal class frigate, the BRP Conrado Yap has a similar maximum speed of about 32 knots and a 4,000 nautical miles of distance. It is also manned by 118 personnel. The BRP Conrado Yap, according to reports, commissioned in 1987 and served until 2016. Following these blockbuster equipment, the Philippine Navy also holds the Del Pilar class offshore patrol vessel, Jacinto class offshore patrol vessel, and Malvar class offshore patrol vessel. Some of these warships are still in use. In fact, the BRP Gregorio Del Pilar even saw a four-year-long overhaul. The Del Pilar class are armed with MK38 Mod 3 25mm auto cannons, MK75 OTO Melora 70 662C Super Rapid Naval Guns, Cannons, and M2HB Browning 50 caliber machine guns. Now, we can go on and on and discuss every single ship and its history, however, it wouldn't do us any good. What we must understand next is the future of the Philippine Navy warship program. There are several conversations being done. First, the Philippine government, and the Philippine Navy itself is still actively in the pursuit of acquiring more warships. According to a rear Admiral, the Philippines expects the arrival of several additional Acero-class gunboats in the next few years. These Acero-class gunboats are manufactured by Israel. Yes, and while it is designated as a gunboat, one should not dismiss its devastating potential in the waters. These Acero-class gunboats are 32 meters long and are touted to, quote, deliver precision strikes against larger hostiles and high-value targets on land or sea. These were also recently christened 
15th last September 6th of 2022, which saw the BRP Nestor Asiro and BRP Lelinato Toong, the first two out of nine vessels acquired from the Israel Shipyards Limited for 10 billion pesos. Further, aside from the Asiro class, the Philippine Navy is still expecting more. Many reports stated that the Philippine Navy is expected to have a navy as large and as formidable as its neighboring counterparts. As of the end of 2022, it was also reported that the Navy has two brand new missile armed frigates, two landing docks, two anti submarine helicopters, and 12 multi purpose attack craft, six of which are now equipped with the Israeli made Spike ER surface to surface missiles. Now, another promising facet about these warships is that there is an ever growing class of Philippine made warships. Or simply put, some local companies are getting ready to manufacture these warships within the Philippines. PropMech Corporation, a local-based boat builder, said that it wants to work with the government to develop naval assets that could be used to defend the country's territory. PropMech's project as of 2021 included 12 units of the Navy's multi-purpose attack crafts, which have evolved into different various and had a building time frame from 2007 to 2019. Hence, the Philippines, in just a few years, may one day have its own locally made warships manufactured by local companies. One should not even forget about the fact that the Philippines has a wide array of experience when it comes to shipbuilding. It was crowned many times in different years to be amongst the world's largest shipbuilders. With experience, time, and money, the Philippines can one day be able to manufacture its own world-class warships. Now, following these acquisitions and future potentials, we may then discuss what is the importance of these warships to the Philippines. As everyone knows, China has has been growing in its assertion of owning the South China Sea. The Philippines, who hold territorial waters in the West Philippine Sea, do not accept their terms. Hence, it could bring us to one of the many explanations why the country is gearing up its naval forces. These are being used to deter China's aggression. For instance, the Philippines has held several bilateral sales with different countries. In late 2023, the Philippines and the United States had utilized one of their most advanced warships cruising the waters of West Philippine Sea. The BRP Jose Rizal was sailing along with U.S. Navy Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer USS Ralph Johnson. While the focus was stated not about China, it is still obviously about its territorial defense. Following this, the Philippine Navy also sailed with Canada. The BRP Antonio Luna completed a bilateral sail in the West Philippine Sea with Halifax class frigate HMCS Ottawa of the Royal Canadian Navy. Will these help? end the provocations of China in the West Philippine Sea? Well, likely it won't, but as time goes on, it is more than possible to see larger and more powerful warships equipped by the Philippines, sailing alongside with other countries seeking to assert their territorial rights. Now, let's talk about the actual benefits of these aside from national defense. Most people often think that warships are just for bolstering a country's naval capabilities. Well, it's more than that. You see, these warships ships are a national pride. It showcases the country's commitment to safeguarding its territories and interests. Secondly, control and protection of maritime trade routes, safeguarding fishing zones, and ensuring unhindered exploration of offshore hydrocarbon resources translate to potential revenue streams. These warships can help the Philippines assert its rights in disputed areas, ensuring that resources that rightfully belong to the nation are not lost to encroachments. But like every benefit, we may still need to talk about the costs. The initial procurement of warships is just the beginning. These advanced vessels come with a recurring cost for maintenance, manpower, training, and armament upgrades. And finally, there are also opportunity costs. Economic decisions always come with trade-offs. Funds directed towards naval upgrades are funds that might not be available for other vital sectors like education, healthcare, or infrastructure. But while there are are both benefits and costs, one must still never disregard the balance to all of these. If the Philippine government can balance its acquisition and protection of the land to the cost, then it is all worth it. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.